22nd of December, Thursday, MAO with Kel once again. Alright, Nike leads the buying, but can it sustain? Now, if you ask me, was it really Nike that brought the market out last night? I will tell you, my answer is no. But of course, that's what the mainstream media is covering and, and people are believing in it. To me, it's more the technical that cause the upside, if you ask me, because my chart called for buyers today. So anyway, I'll share you more in details and of course, Jim Cramer got seven stocks to share with you and maybe you can get some insights from them. All right, once again, please make sure that you do your risk assessment and thank you Ames for the kind sponsorship. All right, so we can see that the market up by 500 points on the Dow Jones, Nasdaq up by 163 points and the S&P up by 57 points. Now, collectively, you can see that they all went up by 1.458%. Hmm, interesting, yeah? Okay, so majority of the S&P counters all went up. Like Microsoft up by 1.9, Google 0.63, Apple 2.38, one of the biggest reasons of the upside, and Amazon 1.85, right? The thing is this, Tesla continued to slide. Now, majority of the consumer products has went up yesterday, but the thing is that the main driver was Nike. <laughs> all right, so I want to know why. So we we'll go deep into it. So we can see that Nike and FedEx earnings was the one that brought the market higher and it's because the Nike bids estimate boosted by the discount promotion and also the the current World Cup right so the main thing reason and the main reason why I think that the uh, Nike share went up is was the World Cup so World Cup final World Cup started in this uh, November and of course prior to that that was where Nike share had been plunging down very interesting on the day that it plunged down right the volume actually surged and this is where I believe that a lot of margin call was traded and then the boys came in heavily and purchased from there and ever since then they steadily moved the price up and of course once the World Cup started wow look at Nike the way it went up right okay so the thing is that very interesting the last few days Nike shares have been going down before the earnings came out hmm, interesting but the volume actually went up the best part of it is that as of yesterday the the Nike share gap up by almost uh, more than 15% at the one stage itself before ending up by uh, 12% but the way the candlestick looks like is more like a reversal hammer so what do you think I don't think that this is a good thing if you ask me but still up by 10% but with the weightage of this Nike in S&P is not too heavy I just wonder why so going deeper is how that we can see the answer so apparently several broking company actually issue reports on Nike and they actually says that their revised target is about 120 to 125 which is somewhere around here hmm, nothing too spectacular if you ask me and of course some other companies say about 105 some of them says 135 some say it's about 130 so in short it's all right 19 companies uh, have issued a buy rating on Nike mm, okay but if you look at the price right now there's not much meat right so I just have my reservation here right and the consensus you can see is about 126 which is somewhere there so this is something that made me ponder and of course other reason why there are some buying because Op Harvest Investment Services lifted its stake in Nike and they bought up by 9.2-9.7 percent okay so it seems like they are trying to buy over Nike not too sure is it ongoing but there's another company uh, coming in Evergreen Capital Management they bought about 7.6 of Nike so seemingly there's more and more companies buying Nike and that could be the only reason why the Nike shares you know bring pour up but uh, if you ask me really in depth itself, right, let's look at the inventories. I'm not comfortable. The inventories you can see in 2021, it was here about 6.5 million. But now you can see over here itself, right, you can see that the number have increased by 43%. So heavy inventories means that cost is there. So I'm not very convinced by this. And, and at the same time itself, right, you can see that there are not much changes inside here. All right, really. So overall, I still feel that this Nike upside is just that the media take it up and play with it. And of course, the boys just want to push it up and clear some uh, options or some some of the short sellers. This is how I feel it. I cannot see any real good reason why we should be jumping into Nike at this point right now. Because if global re recession comes in, this company will definitely be one of the companies to be sold down. So I can't find the reason for buying this right now. Okay. Now, the other company that is in the limelight is obviously Tesla. Now, Tesla volume has been pretty, pretty heavy recently. You can see it on the Tesla volume. All right, it's much, much more than compared. Now, Tesla is now staying at about 138, the level that I mentioned. 
And um, you can see that in terms of the RSI reading, we are near the oversold region, all right? So based on the last few examples, usually there will be a rebound coming in. So I'm not half surprised to see a rebound. But the way is the, the way is coming down and a huge amount of option in the market. I mean, either you're going to have a short squeeze and that will bring Tesla all the way back to 163. That is the optimistic side. If the market get what they want, there is a potential to even see $120, okay? So if you would ask me, I won't do anything right here. Uh, to me itself, right, this is too dangerous. If you hit 120, maybe you can do a buy instead. But if you really insist of short, then take 138 as a pivot. If the market goes over 138, just cut a short. If it goes below 138, then you can aim at 120 and see how it goes from there. Now, one thing to note for next year itself, right, if there's going to be any recession coming in, probably I can sense that the market will rebound later. Why? Because apparently now for next year, 2023, some of the members need to leave the Federal Reserve, okay? I think it's age or term. Well, apparently, all the most of the hawkish people like Susan and James Baller, they will be living, okay? They will be living. And people like uh, this guy, Patrick Harker, Neil, Laurie, they are more of the middle, if not dovish. So if there could be more dovish people coming into the market, we're most likely going to see a bit of recovery next year. So that is just timely because if there's going to be a recession next year and there's a net necessary to really cut interest rate, all these governors may have the, they, I mean, they are in the, in the team, they will say more to the dove side. Hence, therefore, there's a good chance that the market will rebound later. So that's why 2023, we could see a very interesting phenomenon. And of course, Jim Cramer now, because of the last two days, the market recovered. Jim Cramer came out and said that, you know what? It's time to plant the seeds for the profits for 2023. And he have seven stocks in mind to share with you. But I went through the video itself, right? There seems to be more. So nonetheless, I'm going to show you the video right now and see what he has to share with you. Take a look. Get it wrong? The bears are confident they'll either overshoot or undershoot. But either of those outcomes is fine if you own the stock of the Brothers Johnson. Say you don't like healthcare. Have you considered the trillions of dollars the federal government's throwing at bridges, tunnels, and buildings regardless if the Fed throws us a severe slowdown? Yeah, it's already banked. Do you know how much steel they're gonna need? Nucor's the best steel maker in the country. They're gonna be in that mix and the earnings estimates are way too low. Don't you think Deere and Caterpillar will have to go 24-7 just to meet the demand from the engineering and construction firms that build this stuff? Their order books are insane. Their gross margin is voluminous. Their international competition, gone. It's what it used to be when America dominated manufacturing. Oh, and let's not forget, you've got one more reason to buy Deere. There's a global food shortage. That's why I recommended Corteva last night. They make genetically modified seeds and pesticides. Agriculture is insanely strong right now, but the bears want you to ignore that whole industry and instead focus on the two-year treasury, which is apparently sending all the wrong signals. Oh, I guess I got to be scared. All right. So there's a few companies that this uh, uh, Jim Cramer is saying, and of course he touched on food, which I agree with him. All right. Nonetheless, but somehow these companies uh, are all in the uh, US and market. So take a look at all these companies at the back and see which one really suits you and consider to invest. Well, if you, if you believe in what Jim Cramer says. All right, so that will be on Jane Kramer, and we will now go into the charts because there's nothing much on the fundamental to share with you today. Just look at the charts for now. Now, the charts are pretty clear. We can see that the market really hit the point that I mentioned, 32,550, and it staged a rebound. Yesterday was a completely one directional day, and it burst past the KFC level, which I mentioned to you, it's at 33. Um, 1031. So this point here gives you about nearly 400 points upside. Okay. Now the thing is this at this junction right now, where would it go? Well, the upside will be back to this point and that's 34,000. The downside is coming back to 33,031. So you have to make a decision over here. Now, based on what I'm seeing right now, if you do a bit of simple Fibonacci, you take the highest point and lowest point, you bring it down. Okay. You can see right now we have at 38.2%. The 50% mark itself is at about 33,733. So I would say this, if there's going to be any further buying, the market could go all the way up to 33,733 first, okay? Then after that, at 50% mark, usually there'll be the pullback. But if the market is really weak, it will stay around here at 33,400 area. 
440 to be precise, and then pulls back down to 33,089. Now, if the market stays around here, not too bad, but anything lower than that, it will come back to this point again, and that's 32,550. So traders, you need to watch out for this, okay? All right. And of course, for the NASDAQ, you can see that it tries to rebound. It's a very strong doji yesterday. So doji, directional day, bump. The share, the market went up, right? So the thing is that the main thing is that you have to stay above the MLP for today. As long as you stay above the MLP, we are okay, all right? So let's look at the TWB chart to get it a bit closer to us. All right, let's bring the Dow Jones in first. Oops, okay, there's some multi token. Okay, I think there's some issue right here itself. Let me just do something here. All right, let's just look at the Dow Jones for now. Let's take a look. Okay, maybe I'll refresh a little bit. There we go. All right, the Dow Jones today is now hanging around the BNB support level, and that is 34,445. So that 33,445. So which means that as long as the market stays below 445, okay the be selling or will still be around but if you can climb above 33,445 the next target could be as easy as 33,675 area and that's the MA30 level now KSI and KRW are not really giving a positive light on this in fact itself right it shows that the selling has increased even though the prices went up so this is very contrary to the conventional indicators where the price goes up usually the indicators are point higher right but mine actually points to the downside so all i can say is this traders for today go slow in your trading watch the market a little bit if you're not very comfortable in your trading just give a miss okay the downside is sell with 33,207 for the mlp all right now for the nasdaq you can see right now the nasdaq is kind of staying above the pivot two level and as long as it's a ccry as long as it stays above 11,177 the upside can still go higher to 11,340 KSI is green, KRW is red, so that, that means there's a mixture of here, so the market will have a bit of a you know, swing in between, all right? S&P 500, today critical point is 3882. This is the pivot two level, and we all know that as long as S&P can stay above 3882, it will still have some upside, but anything goes below 3882, I believe that 3858 will be the first level for support is the MLP. Interesting, the KSI is green, means the boys are buying, but the weightage is red. So that means that there's a contra each other, that the market will go a bit sideways, downside, okay? And uh, at the moment now, it's trading below the BNB support level. That makes the downside even closer, all right? But again, uh, if DAX is able to give us some hits up, it will be good. Let's look at DAX right now. Now, DAX this morning has gapped up, but uh, this afternoon has gapped up, but there's no much impact to the SM US futures. So that's something very odd, okay? So 14.065 is a pivot two, 14.257 pivot one. Okay, so upside potential should be the same because MA30 and pivot one is relatively the same. So if the upside comes in, we will see 14.255. But if the DAX pulls back down, and go below 14.065, then 14.020 will be the first support. KSI and KRW both are red, so I believe that we should see some selling soon. Okay, so for DEX trading, I think that uh, I'm not comfortable on the long side for now. Hong Kong, oops, wait a minute, okay. All right, for Hong Kong market today, it has went higher and we retest the BNB RL level. The RL level is at 19749. KSI and KRW, both of them are in the positive shape. That's why you can see the market have been pulling up. Now, China A50 today did an incredible, incredible reversal, touching the MA200 perfectly and stopping at MA30 beautifully. It's as if that the market really knows these two MAs and by closing around this area now, below 13,000 is below the psychological level. I kind of believe that the market may have to be very cautious of the wind because now we know that there's a lot of ongoing, uh, what you call death in many cities. Of course, you don't really see the mainstream media. Tomorrow, MAO, I'll cover a bit, a bit more on that. But the main thing is this, all right, I strongly believe that there should be more uh, what they call problem coming out in China, and that might be able to bring the index back down to 12,400 area. So I'll tell you more details tomorrow, all right? Right, and then of course, last one, you see the Nikkei. 
the Nikkei is still not recoverable from the recent sell-off. Now KSI and KRW shows that the boys came in to buy and that probably is the reason that market is holding up. But the ongoing uh, problem, I mean ongoing thing about how BOJ is interpreting what they said recently is uh, seems that it's actually more to the downside than the upside. But at the moment now, it's still supported at the MLP at 26,438 for the DK. So okay, we'll just watch this 26,361, the KCB area. It seems that like every time it stays, it, it uh, hit this area, it always seems to rebound. So we watch this closely. If the market can recover, we can see going back all the way to the BNB um, extension level at 27158. But from the way I look at itself and the magnitude, right, I kind of feel that the likelihood that Nikkei will drop down to 25,850 looks much possible. But of course, the indicator now, both of them are showing the buys are buying. So I'll wait for a while and see how it goes from here. Now, if you look at the gold and silver market, let's go silver first. Now, silver market has uh, relatively been resisted at $24.13. And at the moment now, boys are still buying. KCX is pretty positive. So mm, maybe we will see some support around 23.52. That is the BNB RL level. As long as the market stays above it, I think that should be fine. All right. And uh, for gold, we can see we have a bit of sideway, oops, sorry, a bit of sideway movement. We are sideway movement now. 1816 is the MLP for today, but the BNB RL at 1810 seemingly is a strong, strong base. Now, let's just look at the dollar, shall we, for a quick one. Let me bring the dollar chart right in right now. Okay, let's look at dollar at the moment. Now, the US dollar today has continued to slide a little bit more. Yesterday was up a bit, but today it has came off. It's back below 104 level. So what is going on is that the people are still not very convinced of the current situation in America. And I feel that, right, people are getting worried, okay, getting worried. And you can see from the 10-year yield, it has also pulled back a bit. So probably that also escalated the dollar selling. So, of course, if the dollar is coming down and the yield is coming down, naturally, we do expect the uh, gold price to go higher but the way i'm seeing right now with the ksi selling i just feel that the upside seems to be kind of limited all right today's upside is 1827 and the support i retain that again is slightly 1810 for today and the last two will be ethereum and this uh, bitcoin let's keep a moment now this is ethereum it's been sideways and the upside potential is here and that will be one uh, it's around one two three zero Downside potential is 1149. With the KSI and the KCX in a mixed direction, I think that likely it will stay sideways for time being. And last but not least will be Bitcoin. Bitcoin is also having a big BNB spread. And the thing is this KSI and KRW, both of them are KCX, sorry, uh, in the different direction. So I believe the market will be sideways for now. Now, to me itself, right, very important is that I'll share this before we end this session. I felt that there's something that's brewing right now and it's unseen. But if you've been looking and hearing my MAO, right, it just tells me that a black swan is just around the corner. Tomorrow, MAO itself will be very exciting. I hope that you watch it, all right? This is Carl signing off. Have a great day. Bye-bye.